Hi, I'm Tim Fairclough. And I'm Jenny Lou Jones. You guessed it, welcome back to the sunny side of cruising and thank you for joining us once again on Cruise Lounge. Absolutely, welcome back aboard and thanks for joining us. Now, you know that saying, plane and the trip is half the fun? Mm -hmm. Well, for me personally, that really rings true, especially now as planning our next cruise is about the best we can do. Yeah, you know how there's that saying that in every relationship, there's one person who meticulously plans every single detail of a trip. And That'd then there's- you? Yeah, that's me. And then there's the other person. And Andy literally just shows up and is like, where are we going? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I suppose the one good thing about this downtime is that we do have a lot of time to save for the next trip. Uh, Actually, very important. Mm -hmm. Yep, saving for the next trip, very important, just as much as planning it. Look, personally, researching for the next cruise, I'm just as passionate about as actually going. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Well, on a cruise where you're stopping at a dozen or more ports in the same trip, for me, it's really important to do my research so that at every specific destination, I know what's on offer, what I can do, and how I want to make the most of my experience. And more importantly, you can be the first in line to save time, and that rhymed. That did rhyme. Yeah. And <laughs> uh, look, particularly if you're there for one day, just the one day in yeah. port, so it's really important to research so you can make, make sure you see and do everything you want to do in that port. Mm. So today's episode is actually all about that. And it's all about this fabulous book, The Best of World Cruising. So we have a very special guest in the lounge today. We certainly do. So please welcome all the way from her beautiful sheep farm, in fact, in her converted barn, the first lady of Australian TV travel, and a very familiar face, Katrina Roundtree. Hello everyone, it's so lovely to be with you. Uh, I'm, I'm in theme, I'm in theme. Woo! Notice that, yes Have, you are. Good ready for you. a day on sea. Yeah. <laughs> I love your setup, that looks so fantastic. I know that somebody watching right now will know the town that I bought this shirt from, it's from Enfleur which is one of the great um, uh, stop-offs that you do when you do a cruise down the Seine. Oh, oh beautiful. Wow. There you go. My, my wife will take note. <laughs> shirts, with these shirts, um, I think it's, I'm not sure if it's 58 stripes, um, but these represent all of the battles won by Napoleon. If you ever wear a bateau shirt, there is your little background information. Sorry, my head is full of this rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> and especially now, you're just dying to get it out, I know. <laughs> Tell me about it. Now, if you follow Katrina on Instagram, you'll know that at any moment, you might see a lamb walk past with a watering can stuck on its head. With any luck. With any luck, we might see that. <laughs> so funny. It's uh, these... Potty lambs, we, we call them here. These have been my silver lining throughout, uh, throughout COVID because I've never, like many people, I've never been home this long. So every year you do have the occasional lamb who sadly their mum might pass away and, and you look after them and that's, that's what they call a, a potty lamb. And this has been the first year that I've had the time to care for them. And it's been quite amazing. Uh, I've, I've shown the occasional photo of these lambs and I think people just love them. They love, they love their sweetness. They love, they've, they've watched these beautiful little lambs grow from these tiny little things to wearing jumpers that were sent from all over the world by uh, uh, women involved with the CWA. And now we're just about to release them into the mobs, so to speak. But yeah, I, I will admit the one with the watering can on its head was so embarrassing. I was in the middle of a, a meeting just like this and I turned slightly and there is this lamb with a watering can stuck at its head going, ma, ma, <laughs> looking out for me. Anyway, I said, you'll have to excuse me for a second. Anyway, I went out. Pulled, pulled it off, all was well, all was well, but yeah, it's no. been a really, it's been a really lovely silver lining for me. Absolutely. Anyway, you can check it all out on Katrina's Instagram, it's fabulous. So look, Katrina, look, thanks so much for joining us on a little cruising show here today. And we are, of course, talking about your fabulous book, The Best of World Cruising. Now, by title, there you go. <laughs> by title, it is, of course, all about cruising, not particularly about a world cruise, although there is a chapter in there for that. But I love how you unashamedly told the cruise lines, hey, this book's not all about you, but rather about the incredible archive of cruising ports and destinations out there in the cruising world. 
The publisher approached me, it must have been around three years ago. And it was at that time, as you well know, where cruising was a phenomenon, really, but particularly um, for Australians and New Zealanders who are per capita the biggest cruise market on the planet. And so the publisher approached me and they said, you have to write the ultimate guide to world cruising. And at the time I thought, well, the only way this is gonna work is if all of of the companies are on board and I would just never want a reader to think that this is sponsored. I want I want people to know this is from the heart, this is authentic, and, and nobody has paid to be in this book. This, this is my guide of what I would recommend to friends and family and, and people that watch the show. And, and to their credit, I had everybody from Sir Richard Branson uh, through to, to cruise lovers that I had literally met on cruises that I was was uh, enjoying at the time, be a part of this book, and so it re was released. I, I took um, uh, I took however many months to write it. It was launched last year, and now I mean the irony of releasing a a best of world cruising book and and having it. Uh, through this period where cruising has been affected in such a detrimental way. Um, so let me assure you, it's a joy to be, to be talking about this book that so many of us um, adore and miss at the moment and know she'll be back in 2021. Well, it's actually quite perfect timing because, you know, having the FOMO of a, a trip is kind of half of it. You get to look forward to it more. Well, they have done studies that show that we are at our happiest the moment we book a holiday, whether it's you're booking a camping site or whether it's booking your your long awaited cruise down the Seine for, for whatever it, it may be. But you are at the happiest when you book and when you have something to look forward to, when you've got that carrot dangling. A lot of people think it's, it's when you make it to the Caribbean or where, when, it's, uh, when you, you come home and you can tell all your friends and family what you've enjoyed. But it's that moment. And, and that is human nature, isn't it? It's when you've got something to look forward to. And I suppose that also explains the ratings for Getaway at the moment. Of course, for me, I thought, oh my gosh, how, how will our beautiful show survive during this period? Well, sure enough, our ratings are uh, through the roof. They're fantastic. And that's, that's because of exactly what you say, Jenny. It's because of that, um, that armchair travel. And, and you can't deny the, the yearning people have to, to explore places beyond their backyard. 100%. And as we said in the, the intro, we, um, you know, planning the trip is half, of, half the fun. And that really does ring true. Absolutely. And, you know, writing the book about the destinations and all the ports and the experiences you can do on board is so important because the cruise lines do such a marvellous job of marketing their own ships as a destination themselves. So this is kind of the missing link, I felt anyway. And, and I really love this book. You know, and today we are going to mention, um, you're welcome. I'm going to mention, uh, you know, a few of the contributors as well. Um, at a very own Peter Collar, of course. We'll get to him in a minute because, you know, he likes us talking about him. <laughs> oh, well, we, we like to talk about Peter. <laughs> um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled that, that you say that because uh, people have known me so long. I've been in people's lounge rooms for so long. And so they, they know, they trust that I'm going to deliver something that is authentic. And I, I, as I said before, uh, I know that they wouldn't have appreciated um, any possible mention or, or, or idea that, that this wasn't fair and equal. And, and I hope also in the book, it encapsulates what we love about cruising and that it, it can take so many different shapes and forms. It can be something that um, is maybe taking a halverson along the Hawkesbury, which is what uh, I did with my family and what I used to do um, as a child every Easter. Or it can be, um, it can be heading off up through Alaska, um, all, all those dream locations. And also I think something that sort of goes back to what we were talking about earlier. And I really think that at the moment people have absolutely understood something that I constantly remind people of, and, and it's the concept of carpe diem. Don't put off for in five years uh, this, this cruise or, or this holiday 
or whatever is on your wish list that you may want to do, do it now. Book it now. Book it now. I thoroughly, um, I thoroughly recommend that. I know all of us have our own particular experiences where we've learnt that lesson well and truly, but particularly during this period now, we so many of us are so grateful that we can reminisce about about holidays we've been on, about people that we've met, about this fabulous meal that we've had, and and you know it it, it makes moments like this swapping stories um, all the more joyful. Yeah, absolutely. And you've been to so many incredible destinations. Were they all um, places you happened to go to or were you seeking out particular experiences? All in the name of research, of course. <laughs> well, it, it was a combination of the two, Jenny. Um, uh, I think that when uh, the publishers approached me to do this book, uh, they, they thought I had done every cruise on the planet, but I still had a couple that were on my wish list. And one of those was in my heart, I, I knew I had to include the Kimberley. And, and I had always heard, the one that I mentioned in this book, um, I had always heard that the true north was the ultimate way to experience that extraordinary part of the world. Uh, so I, I, um, I was given um, uh, a small amount of money uh, at the start, um, which which any any publisher does when they when they sign on their author. Well, let me tell you that went like that. <laughs> <laughs> I also um, to go back and experience a little bit of um, of the queens um, I, because I I know that there's a, a phenomenon. Dare I say it once again, where where people will go on board that boat. They'll they'll maybe rent out their house and they will go on board, they'll live on board that ship um, for months, for months. And I was quite fascinated by that lifestyle, so to speak. Uh, I also wanted to go to Croatia. Um, oh, beautiful. Amazing. That was with APT. That was just, oh, I, I hope everybody gets to do that. That was on uh, a small, what I call that one, a boat or a ship. That was on a, a smaller vessel. Um, as, as we know, they will be the ones that take off first uh, in 2021, uh, but that was a pleasure. So there, there were a few still on my wish list that I just knew had to be included. Also, I'd never done the world, but I, I think that was the one that, I think that was the one that Peter did and, and I knew that had to be in it. So there, there were definitely, I just wanted to cover it all. I wanted to cover it all. And that meant that I would connect to, um, to all sorts of different people literally around the world to also share their stories. Absolutely. Now, when researching this book, when writing this book, you called upon many captains of industry. We mentioned our very own Peter Collar, through to Serena Bratton, and none other than Sir Richard Branson. Now, what amazed me reading the book was, <laughs> was that Sir Richard Branson had not actually been on a cruise prior to creating his own cruise line. That probably gets back to what I mentioned about the publisher approaching me and, and he, he knows a good thing when he sees it and, and he knew that cruising uh, was a phenomenon and I suppose his brilliance is is he, he can be the ideas man, but his absolute skill is recognizing great talent and being able to be the conduit to that talent. Um, and whether that is finding the exact right person to run uh, 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 gyms, his music label. Um, the list obviously with Sir Richard goes on and on, um, but but he he wanted to be pardon the pun on board, and I I believe that will be launching his cruise line will be launching next year. Now, um, not only have you met Sir Richard Branson, you've been to his private island. It's a uh, Necker Island, right? Uh, when Virgin first launched in Australia, I was asked to uh, to host 
the big launch um, in Brisbane and Richard was coming out for this event. Now, Richard and I, our, our birthdays are a day apart. And I think that explains we get on really, really well. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, he feels this need, and you'll often see photos of it, he feels this need um, to, to pick you up and throw you in any available water. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, always always wear waterproof mascara around Richard Branson. Yep. Hey fever season, got that covered. <laughs> um, the, the end of the story is that we just got along so well and he's so personable, he's so open and giving and, and they they said, would you like to bring the show to Necker? Um, for anyone that's travelled through the Caribbean, it was it was a it was a pretty full-on journey to to get us there. And I, I actually mentioned uh, my first cruise, which was around the Caribbean. I mentioned that uh, in the story. Well, it took a while to get there, but sure enough, we arrived and he was there with his best friends. He was having a birthday celebration where he he'd brought his buddies uh, out to the island. And we just had the most magical, magical time. And I, I just know that that's, a, that's an experience I'll be telling my grandchildren about for, for in, in the future, for, for years to come. And, and we've retained our friendship. Now, we can't, back to, <laughs> we can't talk about, uh, can't cover every chapter, of course, but let's start at the beginning. And there's no better place to start than, than home, right? So chapter one is, of course, all about Australia and New Zealand. Now let's let's just skip over to New Zealand because I personally am in love with the place. Uh, but particularly, you mentioned there the stunning Marlborough Sounds, the Port of Picton, and just 20 minutes away, the beautiful Marlborough Valley. And I think uh, you, you write a line which really struck true with me about please say yes to any food and vino offered in the Marlborough Valley because it is just so. Don't ever good. tell me that twice. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, that really is, um, it, it really must be on everybody's bucket list. I truly hope that everybody gets to experience the arrival into that Marlborough region. It, it, you don't even have to be religious to understand, wow, Mother Nature, just extraordinary. And, and, and I implore people when they do take that cruise, uh, or, or if, if they have already done it, they'll know what I mean. But to be on that deck as, as you arrive is um, just the most uplifting experience. And then you throw into uh, that particular region, as you say, the food and the wine, all local all local we have to honor that as well it's it really is the gift that keeps on giving i mean hey i'll, I'll i i love i love new zealand any way i can get it i love to drive around it i love to catch the train uh, but as you and i know it is possibly best experienced um arriving on the water and and you just get to take in these extraordinary vistas and there's just so much to do and and um you can you already know that there are clues that new zealand is going to be uh first port for for 2021 as well we so look forward to that and I, i'm pretty sure i'll be showing you that one on getaway as well you will uh, you know and i know when you when you go into when you drive from picton the port of picton over into blenheim you get in a car and you just start driving around the vine vineyards and it's like driving down the White Isle at Dan Murphy's. You know, you see all these, these vineyards that you, you just, all these brands that you know, and you're like, oh my God, there's that, there's that. And then you, uh, you finish, we went to Cloudy Bay a couple of times actually, and Cloudy Bay is just the most beautiful vineyard. And the, the food pair in there with these Marlboro uh, Sounds oysters paired perfectly with the wine. I cannot recommend that enough. So just hire a car in Picton, it's only 20 minutes away to Blenheim and then drive into um, to Cloudy Bay. As, as, as you and I would attest, it's, it's just a must do cruise. And, and also I, I think um, something that could be enjoyed uh, on any size of vessel as well. Well, I can imagine a lot of the suitcase will be taken up by bottles of just freshly made wine oh, yeah. <laughs> on the way. No, no, I, I have in the book a very big tips list 
and you never put wine in your suitcase. You're gonna learn that lesson the hard way, generally with a bottle of red. <laughs> so when you arrive home, woo, it's all through your suitcase. So definitely that one goes in the overhead locker or have it shipped. Well, I mean, I guess you have to also save some room for some retail therapy because uh, <laughs> one of the chapters that really surprised me was of the entire world of retail therapy, one of your best experiences, you said, was the Dora River in Portugal. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna show you something. <laughs> I've got this on hand now. <laughs> um, this is, um, oh, I'm sorry to go. I told you that this room was full of stuff from my travels and I literally have this on hand. So Portugal is home to the most beautiful porcelain. Um, this is famous really around the world. Uh, when I went to sample the green wine, I'd never even heard of green wine, but I, I went to these almost ancient uh, vineyards and and I I ended up buying uh, all of this porcelain from there. I mean, who knew I'd go to Portugal um, and, and, and come home with porcelain. Also, I learned that uh, Portugal is home to many of the um, uh, designer clothing factories. It has an incredible uh, 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 fashion scene there. Um, I, I just, uh, I, I will admit when I arrived in Portugal, I was dressed completely inappropriately. It was spring, but it was cold. So that forced me to go shopping. And yeah, the shopping was, I had to do it. I had to do it. And I'm, I'm just like you as well, where I love to go through that itinerary and I will plan before I go, I'm gonna wear this, for that, I, I, oh, 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 I definitely need to take my pink top for that. I love that. I love that element. And and if I may say, um, I think people certainly on the show they love seeing the clothes uh, that I wear because let me assure you, they're all mine. They're all mine. Uh, there's, there, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, you know, pushing anybody else's label. I am a shopper born and bred. You are the wardrobe department. Yes. Exactly. I think that's also interesting, um, you know, for us when we're working and, and certainly when I was writing this book, uh, for, for me when writing the book and I'd go off on trips, it was it was me on my own uh, most of the time. And for Getaway, it's, it's a very small crew. It's just um, camera, sound producer and myself. So uh, I, I do have to do pretty much everything myself. And so it really helps if you love clothes. Right. And if you like travel, you like shopping. <laughs> All right, look, I actually do like a shop, believe it or not, I do. Not as much as my wife, but I do. Uh, but a passion that's more close to my heart is outdoor exploration. So I want to go back to the chapter uh, about Alaska, and in particular, a very special place that I think you find just as special is Glacier Bay. Now, I know you mentioned in the book you had a, a balcony cabin, and I'm intrigued about this glacial facial. Ooh. <laughs> you were going to bring that up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I tell you what, uh, I was I was going to grab that line, come hell or high water. And, 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 and sure enough, if you are doing that particular cruise, I must implore you to book a cabin with a balcony. I don't, you know, I don't want to go on too much about I actually am obsessed about where particular rooms are on different cruises. That is a cruise, you must have a balcony and, and you can just enjoy in your own time for an extended period of time, those extraordinary glaciers. And, and me, I actually had enough time that I, I could just wake up in the morning and I put my little facial on and I, I did my little picture from the balcony, my glacial facial. <laughs> I absolutely love that. If I may just recommend uh, uh, for anyone interested, that is one particular cruise that I found to be perfect for a generational cruise. That was one where grandparents um, were, were taking their grandchildren on and everybody was happy. It was so comfortable for all ages. Everybody was looked after. Yeah. Um, we know that traveling can take a huge toll on on your beauty regime. So, I mean, what are your tips on sort of dehydration, on sun exposure? Yeah, um, I must say, you always beam positivity and wellness onto our screens. 
Well, I take my vitamins. Um, <laughs> I suppose I would actually begin with that. Um, I once met a nurse on a cruise. You know, we, we talk about the, um, the all the wonderful people that we get to meet, and and she, uh, we were on a cruise that somebody came on with a cold. Well, sure enough, you can imagine slowly throughout this cruise when uh, where people were tired, when they, they've maybe made the long journey over from Australia, their defences are down. Often it is at the beginning of your holiday that you are going to get sick because your body can finally relax, the defences are down. So I thoroughly recommend that before, maybe two weeks before you take your holiday, you want to start taking your vitamins. Maybe you want to take a probiotic or at the very least start taking echinacea or vitamin C. So you want to get your defenses ready for the journey, for the journey. And then of course, start taking, uh, make sure you continue to take them throughout your holiday as well. Of course, when you're on board, definitely uh, try not to Try not to completely overdo the salt and alcohol intake. Um, uh, one, to be respectful of those around you, uh, but, but, <laughs> come on, uh, but also, um, um, you know, you don't want to put on five kilograms uh, from every, every cruise that you take. We know that that happens. <laughs> Hello. make sure that you keep up the exercise because there's so many wonderful ways to exercise on every single different cruise so sign up for those things maybe go walking uh, around the top deck in the morning take the electric bike if that option is there so keep that body moving uh, but definitely keep up the water and yeah I have to admit that for me I do like to take the um, I have I don't know if I've got it with me because um, I, I often have these things sort of on hand, but I have a particular Clarins facial that I, I take with me. It's called SOS. And- oh, yeah, um, you want the yellow one? I, I'll take whatever I can get, but I'll be honest with you, the blue one seems to work really well for me. Uh, Lip balm, that's also the same range, is really good as well. That's my overnight one. Absolutely. <laughs> well, um, the blue range from Clarins, SOS I think it is called, I will admit that that is often what I will put on before I start filming um, or, or if, if respectfully um, I've had a big night, which everyone can relate to when they go on their holidays, the next morning while, whilst I'm having a cuppa, um, I, um, I'll just put a little facial on while I'm, while I'm having a cup of coffee you know, whip it off and, and get into my day. So so you, you really want to um, make sure that your your body and your skin um, can, can drink in those nutrients. Mm. Now, this, of course, is a cruise show all about your book, but from time to time, we still do need to jump on a plane to get a ride to our ship. Now, I was amazed to learn in the book that you had you said you'd never met an airport you didn't like, nor an airline meal. <laughs> I am almost proud of that, and I, I am. Um, I'm genuinely perplexed when I meet people that say, "Look, I understand it," and I, I think I actually even mentioned it in the book. People who have a fear of flying, because you think you know the statistics. You drive a car that it, it does not make sense. Um, I. I adore the view from the plane. I love to be up amongst the clouds. I love to watch all of those crazy movies that you never get the time to watch when you're at home. I, in my heart, believe that these days, the toughest part of your journey will probably be the flight over. So a lot of people will ask about um, particular cruises. Oh, do you think I could do that? Do you think I'm right for that? I don't know if I'm fit enough for that. Truly, your greatest challenge is gonna be the flight over. So you you really just wanna uh, prepare yourself for that. Make sure that when you go to the airport, don't, don't be wearing any jewelry. Make sure that your liquids, not wine, uh, make sure your liquids are packed. You want to really prepare and be early and organized for the check-in. I've got all sorts of different tips about the check-in. Take a photo of where you park your car. Take a photo of your luggage. <laughs> you might need it for insurance. Um, but, uh, but definitely uh, when you're on board as well, you know that you can pre-plan your meals if you would like. The airlines will help you out with that. Maybe you, you have a particular dietary requirements. I used to, I used to um, have on my um, uh, 
my, my flight history, I only wanted, I think, um, low carb or no carb meals. But I was missing out on so many great meals. The best things are carbs. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, 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 also, I, mean, I also mentioned about Air New Zealand. Okay, I'm just going to say they have the best onboard meals. You know what? I love Air New Zealand. I rate them. I know they won the best airline in the world. They, they well deserve it. It is such a good airline. I've flown Air New Zealand so many times and somehow have never managed to fly during a meal time. What? what? You I'm have missed out, girl. I know. I, know. Yeah. I keep hearing about it. Now, okay, so the world has, let's imagine the world has completely opened up again. What is the first place that you're going to cruise to? Well, obviously, I'll, I'll be going around Australia because not only um, does it have my heart, um, but our regional towns really need our support right now. And I know that for me, um, earlier this year, when, when we first March went into lockdown, as I was told to stop packing for my uh, trip to Antarctica, that's another story. Oh, uh, ouch. I, uh, I thought after the drought, after bushfires, I am going to do whatever I can to support our regional towns. And in my particular case, I got this random phone call to see if I'd be interested in hosting a new show uh, that's called Country House Hunters that is going to air on Nine Life at the end of this month. And, and that takes us into all these different regional towns. It's like Escape to the Country. It's quite wonderful. Uh, but definitely for me, I would be looking, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I, I did actually, I just got this message about the True North is actually doing one. Um, that goes to Rocknest Island. Oh, boy, I would love to do. Oh, I would love to do that. Then, of course, I know that Scenic have these incredible culinary tours, gourmet tours uh, that are just sensational. I mean, for me, right now, I'm thinking Coffin Bay oysters. Oh, oh my gosh! Imagine. How, come on, you're smiling. Oh my goodness! I, I'm. I'm just thinking about all of the incredible food that I'm going to have when I initially do my cruises around Australia. Of course, we will then be a part of the bubble to go to either the South Pacific or um, or New Zealand, which is, is pretty much South Pacific as well. But um, I've got a story that will go to air on on Getaway uh, this week. I, I know that I know that uh, I haven't quite got the timing right with the show, but, but that will take you into the Cook Islands. Uh, the Cook Islands is where oh. I, I, I know. That's where I went for my honeymoon. Um, I honestly, uh, you, where does a travel reporter who has been to every nook and cranny in the world, whether they choose to go for their honeymoon, the Cook Islands. Um, but also I know that there are so many people watching right now whose first taste of cruising is going through Vanuatu. Uh, and going around the South Pacific um, to see those extraordinary islands. The wonderful uh, point about that particular cruise is for many people, they almost use it as a research trip. And, and they, they will then, once they do that cruise, they go, oh, oh I'm, I'm gonna go and, and I'm gonna stay for a week in Vanuatu or I definitely want to go back and explore more of Fiji. So they will be our first ones. I mean, in a, in a sense, I will be guided uh, by the world, uh, but also by my boss uh, for, for where they, they are able to send us. I have to be really honest with, with you and with everyone. You know, next year will be my 25th year on Getaway. It'll be the 30th year of Getaway. And I just, in my heart, I just really hope that the show continues. I just really hope that we can um, do what we, we love to do so much. And I, I, I feel like I need to be strong for everybody um, that is watching now, for everybody that, that knows, okay, if Katrina's gonna do it, I can go and do it. Um, I will do whatever I am I'm sent to go and do. Um, uh, I, I believe that will probably be what I just mentioned, but boy, wouldn't it be awesome if I got to go to Antarctica? Oh! That would just be amazing. The edge of the earth. The edge of the earth. So that that's that is um, that's certainly on my bucket list. Yep. And and I, I just have to say, I have to put that energy out there that I will be doing that in 2021 with God as my witness. <laughs> you gotta put it out into the universe. Yeah, absolutely. You gotta put it out there. Well look, Katrina, I don't need my questions anymore because you've just 
Ren, you've answered so many more that we actually had to ask. <laughs> we didn't even need to ask them. And you know what's strange? I just wanted to mention the other day, a couple of days ago, you phoned me and um, out of the blue, wasn't expecting it. And I've heard your voice on TV for just say, 20, 24, 25 years. It's such a, such a familiar voice that it was like I was talking to an old friend. It was quite a surreal experience. I got off and said to my wife, it was just, I felt like I was talking to an old friend. That is so lovely. Thank you very much for saying that. Um, I think that I'm so blessed with the genre of the show that life has has led me to because for me when I was starting out in journalism and TV I just wanted to be Yarn Event and I remember I did a summer on a current affair and firstly they wanted to completely change me they wanted they actually wanted to change my voice can you just talk a little bit lower and slower like Yana and um and I just thought you know what I am going to be the dag that I am I, I cannot be anything else if, if you don't like me thank you don't like me for me that i'm cool with that i just don't want to be anything inauthentic but also i realized um that i i took so much joy when i would meet somebody in the street and they're like, oh katrina i will love it when you take us to egypt i never go to myself i'm so glad you take me sorry for my accent <laughs> A terrible accent. Uh, there's like four different languages in there, but it is such a joy for me to to uh, share stories with other people and and thank heavens um, you don't mind my voice because I sure love talking. <laughs> <laughs> Look, thanks so much for coming on, and I implored people to get this book. If you love cruising, like I've done. 65 cruises so i've done a few right but i still learned a lot from this book you haven't been everywhere um i got this from amazon ordered it was here the next day it was brilliant so thanks for coming on we do have um our mate peter collar coming in shortly he's going to talk about how the book was structured so um we better save some time for him because it's only supposed to be a half hour show but i think we've gone well over to <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that because, as I mentioned earlier, it means so much more that we are still talking about the joy of cruising because the world has obviously pressed pause, but we are going to be back bigger and better next year. And I just really, I really had you in my mind when I was writing this book that it's timeless and dateless. And this is a tool I had in my mind somebody maybe standing in Australia Post and picking up this book and flicking through it and going, I think I'm gonna go and do Alaska, or if I am definitely going to the Kimberley, sign me up. So it's all in here, every tip. And as we mentioned, nobody paid to be in the book. It's completely from the heart and it's every which way that we get to do what we love so much. And that is cruise. Brilliant, bloody brilliant. Thank you, Katrina. Thank you. Thanks so much. Yeah, we're ourselves here too. Don't worry, we don't take ourselves too seriously. So thanks so much. And um, yeah, we'll um, speak to you again soon. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, guys, have a lovely weekend. I'll speak to you later. Bye. Hello, mate. How are you? I'm well. I'm it's nice to be out of the office, actually. Hello, <laughs> you poor bugger. <laughs> Stuck down there day after day. Oh, you've got to be working. I know. But look, in the aft view today. Yeah, nice to get uh, the fresh breeze and what a view. I know. It's beautiful. Yeah. Now, anyway, we are, of course, talking all about this fabulous book that you had a lot to do with. And as Katrina mentioned, well, I think as I mentioned, you were one of the contributing editors. One contributing. of many of those famous... Uh, yeah. Uh, Alongside Richard Branson? What a format. Oh, I've got two chapters. He only got one. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well done, mate. But look, there's obviously a lot that goes into putting together a book like this. Mm -hmm. So how did you, as the cruise expert, be get, get approached? I was actually um, sailing down the Mekong. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. on, uh, it was a beautiful Pandora ship, actually, and I uh, got a phone call saying, Katrina Roundtree wants to speak to you. Yep. And we all know who Katrina Roundtree course, is in, yeah. the, in the travel circles. And I was wondering what I did wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Got in touch. And of course, as soon as you hear her iconic voice, yeah. you sort of melt and you just, it's, you're just so familiar. And you just feel at ease straight away. 
and she explained that uh, she's putting a book together, or she was asked to, you know, ac you know, accumulate her travels into mm -hmm. a, into a book, and that I was the person to that knew not only the various destinations and the, the various topics, but of course. Um, some people that she may need to connect with. So she's done a lot of cruising in different formats, but there were some that she didn't quite uh, have that experience didn't with. Didn't know who to speak with. So you, of course, being who you are, we knew exactly who, who, yeah, who so we, we were in touch with. Yeah, we, so we, we looked at the spectrum of what's on offer, what, you know, how we're going to, um, what's going to be in the book, first of all. What the, so we've got the sailing, we've got the river cruising, you've got yep. the barges, you've got the expedition. So you helped um, come up with the structure of so how the The structure and formatted. then the destinations. And of course, I, I don't know, um, had that little bit at the end where I want to finish with a world cruise because I think everyone should finish with a world cruise, their tr uh, cruising travels. Finish their life with a yeah. world cruise. <laughs> it does happen. So it was, it was, it was interesting. And um, so, yeah, so she went out and um, she was so dynamic, just went out there and did all those cruises. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was great working with her. She's a true professional person and just a really great person. Well, she yeah. gave you a rep too, mate. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> so look, you, the book is not just for the first time cruiser. As you and I both know, it, mm. it, it covers all bases. So I got a lot out of it myself, because uh, you haven't cruised everywhere, of course. Mm. So uh, the book has many contributors who have cruised these these different regions. I mean, Greg Mortimer, for example, mm -hmm. you know, on the the Antarctica section, because yeah. no one knows Greg Mortimer. Uh, no one knows Antarctica like Greg. Like Warren. his wife. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You and I, I mean, we're geeks, so we'll 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 read cover to cover because we just love it yep. so much. But yep. the thing, it's it's a perfect reference book. You can just pick up any chapter. You don't have to, and, you know, I'll just pick one up now. Portugal the and one Spain. You wrote? Uh, actually, this is uh, bookmarked right here. <laughs> actually, I wrote the chapter on the Mediterranean, but um, there it is, the Mediterranean. Yes. But um, you just open up to a certain region. Mm -hmm. So and the tips are great. So uh, what to pack for that particular region, the seasonality, mm -hmm. when's the best time to go, the shoulder season, which in the industry means that just before peak season, where yep. it's just coming into sort of season, they're really nice because they're, uh, it's great. A little shoulder bit seasons, quiet. particularly in the med that you write about, October, mm. April. Shoulder season in Alaska is my favourite, particularly yeah. around the fall. People obviously relate Alaska with you know ice and glaciers and so forth, but the foliage, uh, when you're getting to that October, that, that fall season, and that beautiful hue starts to change into the reds and oranges, the brown, it is just so picturesque. Yeah, yeah definitely. So there's a lot of good tips. So uh, I said what to pack, what, what time of year. Um, and and then another most, sorry, just to interrupt mm. you on that section, on the tip section, one that's really great is who to take. Yes. H how important is that? You know, it's what, what to wear, what to pack, but who to take. Because your travelling companions mm -hmm. you know, can mean a, a good yes, holiday or a really And what one. that means is it might be a region that pertains to a, a lot of great social um, scenarios where you, you can go explore restaurants together or, or different things. But then there's other areas that may be a more learned landscape. Uh, particularly around maybe the Russian waterways, which is such a learned sort of area. If you've got a bit of knowledge there, you want to take an historian. Um, a lot of history yeah. has been made there. Yeah. Um, and the travel tips, I love it. You know, yeah, I've, I've written a few, but then I got to read all these other great the other people, ones. Serena Bratton and yeah, uh, yeah. all their travel tips. And it was yeah. so intriguing even for me. It, it is, it's great. Mm. Okay, so you, you do all your behind the scenes stuff, your research, you get a manuscript. So then how does that transform from just a bunch of words into a finished product like well, this? You know, that was actually um, the most pleasing aspect, seeing the finished product, because I didn't even expect how good it turned out. Oh, it was out. better than you thought? Much better, because you know all you see for a long time is text. Mm. Um, I had supplied a few photos, but Katrina's obviously got her um, her photo album out and, and mm. shown a lot of those. So you know what's going to be in there, but um, you don't know how they're going to uh, collate it, how they're going to group it. Um, mm. You have an idea, but uh, when Hardy Grant, uh, well, first of all, the editing process, that was amazing because they have to fact check every single palace oh, and cathedral. Would. And yeah. uh, if you say you know, your travel tips turn right, they, they actually research and make sure that you've got that right. <laughs> so it really is a reference book. It is, definitely. Mm. And then when it came together, I wasn't quite sure. And, and it, but you know, just the photography, um, the way it's sectioned, it's easily to f find you know, your travel tips or what to pack, and it's consistent. I just think it's a, a perfect coffee table book. Mm. Um, to have. You mentioned um, photographs. Do you know that one of mine is actually in there? Oh, is it? Mm. I didn't know that until I read it. 
<laughs> was because I supplied them to the cruise lines and oh, okay. the, the cruise lines supplied it to the, the publisher. So it's mm. a, from Royal Caribbean, there's one in, of the ship in Sydney. But, nice work. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so you mentioned, we go through all the chapters, and you mentioned that you wanted the book to finish with the World Cruise, and there must be a reason why. I think it's the ultimate sailing experience. It's the ultimate life experience. Um, I've been very fortunate to have uh, done five of them now. Sorry, Tim. Um, but working, working hard. <laughs> yeah, I know, of course. On all, yeah. all the tours. But th there's something about a World Cruise that you can't read in a brochure. You can read it in the book, but there's a bond that happens because when you're traveling with the, the same, same people, people through yeah. that duration, yeah. having all those experiences, whether it's in the city, it's in the rural areas, it's out to little commu you know, communities and, and, and not just the, the visitation of the ports, but just life on board, there's different events, um, special mm. occasions, everyone's having a birthday at some stage, you yeah, have true. one person's yeah. party one week, you go the other, yeah. part. And just everyone just has a bond. Yeah. Um, and it's so special and, and to this day, I, I still have friends from my very first World Cruise, I think it was 99 or 2000, they live in Orange County, um, Cliff and Darlene, hello. Um, but I still talk to them this day, this is 21 years later. Yeah. Um, that bond uh, is just irreplaceable. Yeah. So I just think we all want to travel to all these destinations, but our ultimate goal should be a World Cruise. And that's why I wanted to finish with that, with the book. Perfect. So Katrina was very nice to agree to that. Yes. Perfect, yeah. And you know, um, just uh, telling, when you're explaining that, it brought back memories. I, I have not done a complete world cruise, but I've been on sectors. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting when you do come on a sector because the, the guests have been on the, the, the halfway through the world cruise, it is their home. <laughs> And they don't like you coming on. They're like, who's this newcomer? You know, you're in my chair. This is um, very true. <laughs> and I have noticed, I've witnessed some of them come to breakfast, the breakfast buffet, in their dressing gown and slippers. <laughs> like, because it really, they really do. It's true. But it Walker really has started to change in the sense they used to be uh, as one back in the early days, um, just that one journey. And then they started breaking out into two and three and four different segments. Yep. But now uh, you've got much more segmentation. So yep. there is a constant turnover. So back when you did people. it, it was the whole lot or nothing? Uh, back when I did it, it was four legs. Mm. Yeah. Some cruise lines still do it. I think some, Viking, some still do. I think you have to do the whole thing, mm. I think, from memory. And it depends how, how, how they sell. So they check that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, so they will sell the World Cruise first. And then what is, it, what is left over, they'll break into the segments. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah right. Good. All right, mate. Well, look, um, that just about wraps us up here for okay. the episode today. We, we've, we've gone way over time. Are you going to send me back to my office? <laughs> back down. The next episode. You can take I want to stay up here. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's nice up here. Look, thanks, mate. Thanks for coming in a quick chat. And it's a great book. And um, yeah, I, I definitely do recommend it. And great work, mate. Good oh, stuff. great. No, Katrina, uh, she's, she's the key. Uh, she's just fabulous. So, right. Yeah, thank you. Good. Catch you later. That was so interesting because I had no idea that all of that was required to put a travel book together. Yeah, it's not just a matter of taking notes, is it? There's a lot, lot that goes into Snap it. Snap a so. couple of iPhone photos, <laughs> yes, off it goes. That's right. <laughs> that's right. No, it was good. Like we got to see, speak to Katrina, of course, uh, about the writing side of things, and, and Peter also about the writing side of things, but the, how the book comes together and, and all, all that's involved. So yeah, really good stuff. And what a lovely, um, lovely lady Katrina was. Uh, you yeah. know, it's, it's really nice when I mean, you meet someone like that who's so famous for the first time. and. They're just as lovely as you imagine they would be. So it exactly, was nice. Exactly, yeah. Especially when you've watched them on TV for so long, you feel like they know them, and then they're exactly the same when, yeah, you, when you talk yeah, to them. Yeah, yeah. That's, that was good. Well, thank you so much for joining us once again, and don't forget to tune in next week for a little more cruising fix. Absolutely. And stick around for Jenny's bloopers at the end, as always. See you next week. See you then. Well, that was really interesting because... <laughs> 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 okay, what do you want me to say? I don't know. Do you want to do the outro? No. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Look, who's the high maintenance one here? Who's the high maintenance one here? You'd think it would be me, right? No. You see what I've got to put up with? They look great, mate. Awesome. Thank you so much, Peter. It's actually really fascinating. Did you know all of that about how a book comes together? I was here interviewing him. Oh, yeah, shit. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm saying, did you know beforehand? No, but you...
Oh, did, did you? Did you think, oh, did so, you? Oh, so hard. Oh, did you? <laughs> Why are you sweating? I don't know. No. Seriously, are you okay? Why are you sweating? I don't know. It's not, it's not hot. It's the Barmer Forest fever. Come back to get me. Okay. <laughs> oh, I can't just switch it on and off like that when she's been laughing. Oh. No, but I mean, perfect and uh, I forgot how oh, you put me off. <laughs> oh, it's Peter. No, let's, keep, let's keep going. But look. Stop looking at the book. <laughs> well, I'm trying to remember what's in there. <laughs> that was two years. We still recording? I don't know if you guys can hear, but right outside my window, my husband is mowing the lawn. And it, 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 it yeah, um, you, you can probably hear him now because he's right at the window. I mean, I don't know. He's, he's got his headphones on, but it takes so much to get him to mow the lawn. I went, no. I am not stopping him. I, I need that lawn done. <laughs> <laughs>